Hey everybody, this is Timothy Gay here, and today we're going to do some more Rising Sun strategy. Alright, finally. Um, sorry for the delay between these ones. Things got crazy with work and kids, and I'm squeezing this in. <laughs> Just for you guys, because I love you. Um, but today we're going to look at the Dragonfly Clan. And the Dragonfly Clan is the Gossamer Wings. Whatever that means. I don't know. <laughs> sorry. Here's their figures. We got their Stronghold. We've got their Daimo. We've got their Shinto. Here, the bird looking. And these are all people that have to do kind of with their power. They start over in Hokkaido, up in the top here. So we're in the top corner of the board, but it doesn't really matter where they start. You know why? Because their power. You may move your figures anywhere on the map and may summon them in any province. Now, what does that mean? Well, normally in the game, you know, you could only, all the other clans can only move to adjacent areas. They could take the shipping routes and get to these places over here, but say they could only go here to here or here to here. Now, the dragonfly can go here and just fly any figure they want over to here or over here. They can bounce around the board really easily and it doesn't matter where they actually build their strongholds. So you can build that stronghold, it's just kind of there to look pretty because it doesn't matter. You can summon here. Boom, all of a sudden, I'm in Kyoto. Look out, world. <laughs> Dragonfly's here. Okay, so that's their power. They start with some money, it's a good amount, six. Um, it's not bad. Now let me tell you, Dragonfly. Dragonfly is the uh, clan that I usually like if, I, if I'm playing with somebody that has never played or doesn't have that much experience with the game or this type of game. I usually say, be Dragonfly. Because Dragonfly is super flexible, all because of their little movement thing. But they're also flexible in the strategy that they can go for. Now this... Um, and, and you can kind of pair up some strategies. Now, it's going to be different based on what everybody's doing on the board, what you can get away with. But what I typically do when I'm playing Dragonfly is a two-fold strategy. And the first fold is the fun part. And we'll just go straight into the war phase for them because this is where it's most important for Dragonfly. The rest of the phase, what you're trying to do is to... You know, you got to know what's going to trigger in the war phase, of course. You need to know what everybody else is going for. You don't want to get in a fight that you're going to have to win. You kind of want to get in fights that you can lose. And my Blood Rage brethren would call that the Loki strategy, where you're actively killing off your own figures in a way that benefits you, and it's extra juicy in this game because you can try to get people to waste their war advantage is money. So what we're really looking at on this is seppuku. We're going to focus our efforts on sneaking into fights. Say there's a big rumble in Oshu. Well, before Oshu gets to fight, hopefully during the round, the, the, the season, we can sneak a figure in there knowing that it's going to fight. We don't care. We don't want Oshu. Maybe we already got Oshu because we do still want to win areas. We do, and I'll get to that. That's the second fold of this strategy. The first, we're still in the first one here. So maybe you sneak in a figure knowing it'll die. A couple of figures. You'll know the strength for the most part. You won't know the Ronin. You'll know the amount of Ronin they could possibly add. So you can math it out and make sure that you would lose. Because you want to get these points, you're also going to go up on the honor. So Dragonfly or uh, Dragonfly is going to typically be higher on the honor uh, chart. So uh, no Oni strategy for these guys, really, unfortunately. As much as I love the Oni. So we're going to want to really focus on Seppuku. And we're also going to want to get that Imperial Poets because that's just an extra bonus that we would get on top of our other guy that would die. So if we just killed one, you know we'd get two points there. Now the trick is to make sure you win that or make people think you want to do that. So this would really call to some bluffing. If you like to bluff, you're going to love this because what you would want is to make your opponents say, I don't want uh, so-and-so with the dragonfly to win seppuku. I got enough money, you know, maybe the Lotus Clan. Um, 
I like to actually tail the Lotus clan around because I know they got a lot of money to spend and they'll waste a bunch of money on seppuku just to stop me from doing it. And it doesn't help them at all. They'll put just enough to, uh, you know, stop me. Um, they'll end up killing themselves. <laughs> so it gets to that point where you're going to be scoring a lot of points during the game off of things like this with the help of these cards, of course. Um, but, you know, there's little tricks you can do bluffing wise to make them waste more coins on different areas that they would not normally want to. A lot of times you, if you do this, you know, they want to win that area. So they may not, but maybe they're in there and you just snuck up on them. And now that area is triggering. Nobody really cared about it. Um, you know, that's a great way to, you know, sneak people or, or Imperial poets, you know, they'll waste a lot of coin on that to stop you from double downing. That's what you'll likely see. Um, and maybe you go, well, have it. Spend those five coins. I'm going to lose, and you're going to give me those coins. And now I'm going to use those coins for the second part of my tactics here, which is actually win spots. You know, you have the advantage to take as many guys and get to any spot on the board, even at the last minute. Hopefully in the turn order, you're near the end. You can do a marshal uh, or... A great strategy for dragonflies to build up their strongholds. I said it doesn't matter where you put them, but it does matter that you have them because you want to have the maximum amount of figures on the board by the end of every round and when we get to the war phase. You want to have all your guys out if possible. There's some cards that are going to help us do that. We'll get to that in a second. But you want that flexibility option. Say you really need Edo to go, you know, get this. These bonuses are huge. You still need to get those. So you don't want to lose everything, but you do want to lose. <laughs> so, not the game. You want to lose some fights to sneak some points <coughs> Excuse me. during the round. <coughs> Excuse me. Ugh. So let's talk about... Um, that's the basic strategy there, is to uh, lose some and then win the ones that really matter by getting the money from the ones you lost, you know, because the winner has to give you that money. So, and hopefully you're only competing against one person, so you get all that money, which would be great. So let's go ahead and just dive into some cards that are going to help us accomplish some things for Dragonfly. Um, like I said, they are very flexible, so if things aren't going right for the um, Loki strategy, you can abandon it and just go full-on crush. Um uh, oh, before we get to the cards, let's talk about who we want to ally with, because that's very important in this game. I think you want to ally with uh, Turtle Clan. You would have a similar interest in getting strongholds. Uh, Turtle Clan, you know, they have the power where their strongholds are super powered and can move around. So they want strongholds. You want strongholds. Let's team up. Let's both get our strongholds. Um, um, another one, of course, is the... Uh, shoot <laughs> the purple I, I get the names forgotten um where they can choose the mandate everybody wants to partner with them this is no different here and then um we want to go after yellow on this board because they're going to have a lot of money to spend on that war phase because they got the discount um so we would want to you know tail them around for the suicidal missions that we go on where we're, we're uh, purposely killing our own dudes and hopefully put just enough where we're bluffing and make them waste their money on uh, battles and give us some more income during the war phase. So that's it in a nutshell. What has worked for me with uh, Dragonfly, they're very easy and adaptable. So let's see some more ways they can adapt with these cards. Let's start with spring cards, Path of the Builder. When any player plays a martial mandate, you can build a stronghold. Just an easy way to get more strongholds. That's pretty clear there. We got Path of the Kennen. This is a Bushi upgrade. So your Bushi, you know, are your little figures that uh, have no special powers, really. Um, but this would give them one. After you summon, you may place an extra Bushi in any of your strongholds. Just a faster way to get more guys on the board. We want to max out our board presence. Every single... Um, season. Here's the first of our monsters. Jinminju, the tree, the spooky tree with the heads. Uh, it says during the recruit mandate you can summon a figure in this province and lose honor. That's okay if we lose honor. You know we're going to be able to balance it back when we seppuku. It's not a big deal. This is a tree guy. Really cool. Spooky. <laughs> but it's, a, it's a, basically an extra stronghold. So that's great for us getting guys on the board. 
righteousness. For each of your figures that is killed gain a point. So that is awesome. With one figure, if we win Seppuku and Imperial Poets, that's three points. You can really start churning out some if you purposely lose these things, you know, with multiple figures in a spot. Say somebody has really loaded up Kyoto, that is perfect because we're going to go in there and just hopefully lose. <laughs> and, um, and so that will give us a bonus point. That's a great way to get bonus points. Phoenix is probably the best monster for us because it wants to die because it'll gain a point every time it does, but it gets to come back right away. Okay, super cool looking miniature. Sorry for the shakes. But, you know, that's a great... That's better than any of what uh, what our clan can already provide because it comes back for free. It only costs a coin, super cheap, and you get that point. So this this phoenix could get you four points when it dies if you can combo all these things and then that other card. Definitely get those two going together, 100%. I think they're in the same... Let's see. Oh, well, that one's in the base, so we're good. Yeah, okay. Perfect. I always need to check that they actually can be comboed. <laughs> that would be good. So Path of the Lord, War, blah, 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 Warlord, after you summon, gain a coin. We're going to be summoning, summoning as much as we can. Extra coin. It's great. It only costs a coin. It'll pay for itself very quickly. Koneko, another monster that if it's killed, you get stuff. This one says if it's killed, gain two coins and two ronin. Uh, the other players would lose two coins and two Ronin. So here's her figure. Really cool looking cat lady. Um, but what you want to do with her is the same with Phoenix. Get her in a spot you know she's going to lose. You're going to get some benefits, coins. So hopefully in a earlier fight, so you can use those coins in the wars that you want to win, would be great because you're not going to get to take them with you. You know, you only get that six back. <laughs> Path of the Serpent. This one is just basically screwing over your opponents because every time they would use a shipping route and everyone else would, you know, <coughs> most likely use a shipping route because they have to, would have to pay you a coin each time each figure that crosses on those shipping routes. So we don't have to worry about it. It's not a big deal if we don't get this. It's just great to tax everybody for something we already have an advantage of because we're never going to use shipping routes. So... That's a good one just to be a little mean. That's why there's this mean-looking snake. <laughs> Being mean is good in this game. Path of the Samurai costs a couple of bucks. This is another Bushi upgrade, our little guys. At the end of the recruit mandate, you may place an extra... Didn't I already do this one? I thought I did this one. I think I grabbed it twice. No? Path of the Kinnon. After you summon, you may place an extra Bushi. Oh, okay. Well, this is just a different name, I guess. <laughs> extra bushy oh in any province okay i knew i threw this in there for a reason i'm a professional i swear you may place an extra bushy in any province so it's just it doesn't matter for us because we, our strongholds are irre irrelevant where they're at but it's just the same thing for us so and this is also going to help us not let uh, somebody else get that because we want to flood the board and if you had both can you get both let's see let's look at it together well this would be in the bridge set and then this would be in the hey look at that that would be great because you could put two out you could double down awesome yes that's even better now <laughs> awesome awesome jiki nikki ninki each time another figure is killed in this province gain uh, a victory point and lose honor here's the figure super kind of looks like something that came out of the grudge doesn't it Wrinkly clothes, <laughs> long hair, um, giant feet for some reason. It's so weird. But uh, yeah, so uh, pretty self-explanatory. Other figures get killed, um, and you would gain points and lose honor. It's not a big deal because we'll be gaining honor. And it says other figures, so it can be yours. And what do we want to do? Kill ourselves off sometimes, so even better and this would be a good one that we can use when we're actually wanting to win too because when we win you know they get taken out of the province and we would get the point in honor there too so that's a win-win and the last card is our winter upgrade card form a kitsune get three points for each stronghold because we're going to max our strongholds right 
Right, kids? We're going to max our strongholds. Now, up in the temples, the best one for us, and it's really only one um, that would fit the strategy. They'd all be good. You know, the one with the coins, one with the ronin. They, they're all helpful for us. But this one specifically, we can place an extra uh, bo uh, bushi anywhere on the board that we want, you know. So, extra bushi on the board, perfect for us. And, you know... We get to the point where we have four strongholds. Four strongholds is almost like a martial mandate for us in the later game because we could, if we had four, we could add four figures. We could put those four figures anywhere. So we wouldn't have to rely on a martial mandate coming up. We could just, you know, when we summon, we could summon as if we were marshalling and just strategically put out where we want to go. So that flexibility is there. Uh, like I said, this is a great clan to uh, a great starter clan this is the first clan i played um when i was taught the game and i did some of these strategies and it worked really well and i usually try to tell people um oh, kind of nudge them in this direction for that but usually people pick up on their own so this is a great um one if you got somebody that's new to the group and wants to play it's not hard to do not hard to be successful at um you know really straightforward clan awesome clan and i hope this helps a little bit um uh, help you make them even better so thanks for watching again and we're gonna try to do these uh more often <laughs> hopefully all right thanks guys and gals have a good one